Let's start off by remembering what we know about inequalities. These are the symbols. This is the greater than symbol and this is the smaller than symbol. So for example, you can write 3 is greater than 2 or 1 is less than 7. Now what happens when you want to denote that something is greater than or equals to? So you add in an additional stroke at the bottom. This symbol now means greater than or equals. For example, you can have an expression that says x is greater than or equals to 2. Or if you want, you can write the smaller than or equal symbol. So x is smaller than or equals to minus 3. So how does this look on the number line? So the number line looks like this. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So x greater than 2 is a circle, but you need to make it a dot because it is inclusive of 2 and like that. When x is less than minus 3, we draw the same number line with minus 3 here, minus 2, minus 4, minus 5, and your sign points in the other direction. So when you have something like this, greater than, and if x is greater than 7, your number line will look like this, 6, 7, 8, 9, and because this is greater than without equals, it is not inclusive of 7, we use a circle to notate it. So it looks like this. So what does this symbol mean? This means that the x value can take on any value to the right hand side. 7 is not inclusive but 7.1 or 7.00001 onwards, 8, 9, they are all possible values. Similar to this graph or this number line where x can take on any value inclusive of minus 3, minus 3, all the values in between minus 3 to minus 4 to minus 5 all the way to minus infinity. So now let us see how we can make use of inequalities to solve equations. For example, let me start out by writing a perfectly legitimate equation here. 3 is greater than 2. Now, if you want to operate on this inequality, this works exactly in the same manner as an equal sign. So for example, 3 is greater than 2. If I were to minus 1 on both sides, I will have 2 is greater than 1. This is still perfectly legitimate. It's correct. If I want to minus 5 on both sides, I will have negative 3 is greater than negative 4, which is still correct. So whatever you do to the left hand side, you have to do to the right hand side. And this is exactly the same as how you operate on an equation. So the tricky part is when you want to multiply or divide by a negative number, I'm going to write it down here to make it absolutely clear, multiply or divide by negative number the sign changes. So what do I mean? So let's examine this expression. 3 is greater than 2. Now if I were to minus, multiply by minus 1 on both sides, I will have minus 3 greater than minus 2. Now if you look at this expression carefully, minus 3 is most definitely not equals to negative 2. So the sign is wrong. So you will have to flip the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So the correct way to do this will be to 
right will be to right. Negative 3, flip the sign, less than negative 2. So that's the rule that you need. So let's see how we can make use of what we have learned to solve our first example. So let's say you want to solve an expression x plus 4 is less than 3. So I want to shift the 4 over. So what do I do? I minus 4 on the left hand side and I minus 4 on the right hand side. So I will have x less than minus 1. So you will have to draw your number line to illustrate clearly. So you can start off by 0, 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and you have to draw a circle because it's not inclusive of minus 1, and you have to draw an arrow. So let's take a look at another simple example. For example, you have minus 4y minus 5 is greater than or equals to 11. Now solve for y. So what do we do? We want to shift the minus 5 over. So you will have minus 4y is greater than or equals to 16. Now remember, anything you do to this side, you have to do to this side. So we are adding 5 to this side. This side, you add 5. So now you have to divide minus 4 on both sides. And remember the rule that I told you just now. When you have when you divide or multiply by a negative number, the sign changes. So y, flip the sign, 16 over negative 4. And y is smaller than or equals to negative 4. So there you have it. So you draw your number line next. And perhaps you have um, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. 2, negative 1, and now your y is inclusive of negative 4, so you have to draw a dot and draw an arrow on this side to illustrate that the numbers can take on any value that is smaller than negative 4. So now let's see how we can make use of inequalities to solve a practical problem. Vishal has 12 pieces of $10 and $5 notes in his wallet. If the total value of all the notes is less than 95, what is the maximum number of $10 notes he has? First, we write down what we have. We let the number of $10 notes be x. So what else do we know? We know that the number of $5 notes since the total number of notes that Vishal has is 12, so the number of $5 notes must be 12 minus x. We can form our equation next. The number of $10 notes multiply by $10 plus the number of $5 notes multiply by 5 is less than $95 as required by the question. So if we solve this, we will be able to find out what is x, and x is the number of $10 notes Vishal has. x times 10 is 10x. Here, 12 times 5 is 60 minus 5x. is less than 95. So we combine 10x and 5x, you'll have 5x left. And now let's shift 60 to the other side. So it's less than 35. Now the sign doesn't need to change because you didn't multiply or divide by a negative number. X will be less than 7. So great. So you have found out that the number of $10 notes must be less than 7. So since you need to have a discrete number, there can only be one largest number, and the number is 6. So the maximum number of $10 notes Vishal has will be 6.